for me, it was really tough to lose my, um, I just felt like my roots were gone. Tears stream down Amanda Sullivan's face as she remembers losing it all after Tropical Storm Ida hit her Manville home. I swam from my first floor apartment on North First Avenue to the second floor of my building. I was able to get my pets out, myself. I have this prosthetic running leg. Thank God I got this guy and the prosthetic leg that I'm wearing. But besides that, um, nothing else. Four months later, Sullivan is renting out a room nearby, but is struggling to make ends meet. She's one of thousands of other New Jerseyans turning to FEMA for help. As of today, the federal agency has approved almost $214 million in Ida disaster relief. Survivors can use the money for rental assistance, essential home repairs, personal property losses, and other serious disaster related needs not covered by insurance. And best of all, it's grant money, so it doesn't have to be repaid. But time is running out. Anyone looking for federal disaster assistance related to Ida must apply by tomorrow. But submitting an application before the deadline isn't the problem for Sullivan. She says she confirmed FEMA has been sending her payments since October, but she just hasn't received anything. They said that they were sent to um, the Manville Post Office, except <laughs> the Manville Post Office was underwater until November. So trying to figure out where my checks are. I can't tell you how many times I've been to the Manville post office, Hillsborough post office, all these other post offices. Everyone always gives me phone numbers to constantly call and call. And it's just this loop that just keeps leading back to FEMA. I would say it was probably a full-time job of trying to get anyone from FEMA to, to help us basically. Jill Ann Hamilton expressing her frustration with trying to get disaster relief after tropical storm Ida devastated her home in Basking Ridge where she lives with her two children. Hamilton has received funds but she says it's simply not enough. The total cost to have our home between the water mitigation, the walls, the plumbing, the electrical work, because the water was high enough where it went into the sockets and things, was um, $39,897. That does not include any furniture, okay? FEMA came and provided me with $11,700. I have not had any contact with anyone except a woman named uh, Megan, I believe, in Washington, D.C., who left me a message basically saying that they were going to try to get me a new inspector. So I'd never received any information from a new inspector or anything. They just basically sent me an email saying, uh, we, we looked at your case and this is how much we think you, earn, you, you deserve. FEMA is a piece of the puzzle. We are certainly not the entire piece. It takes the community, the state, the local municipalities, the nonprofits, all of us working together hand in hand to help people on the road to recovery. Any money a survivor receives from FEMA is usually only supplemental. It's not enough to make you whole. So the average grant is about five to $8,000. So if you've lost everything, that's, that's not going to rebuild your home. Another resource on top of FEMA is the Small Business Administration, which doesn't require Ida survivors to own a business to get a small interest loan. To date, the SBA has approved roughly 4,800 loans for a total of almost $229 million. As a single mother of a kid in college, the last thing I need to do is take out an SBA loan to pay for my mortgage because I can barely, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher in town. I can barely pay my mortgage, you know, just doing my thing. So to take out a loan to fix my house, I can't even do it financially. FEMA says their goal is always to help people get back on their feet as soon as possible, and their staff does their best to make sure all concerns are addressed. If a survivor hasn't received a payment, they should call the FEMA help desk and request to stop payment. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper.